Today's reading follows on from yesterday at Mark chapter 6, and I'm starting today from verse 45. At once, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and set sail across towards Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. He took his leave of them and went off up the mountain to pray. When evening came, the boat was in the middle of the sea, and he was alone on the shore. He saw they were having to work hard at rowing because the wind was against them. And he came to them about the fourth watch of the night, walking on the sea. He intended to go past them, but they saw him walking on the sea and thought it was an apparition. They yelled out. All of them saw him and they were scared stiff. At once he spoke to them. Cheer up, he said. It's me. Don't be afraid. He came up to them and got into the boat, and the wind stopped. They were overwhelmed with astonishment. They hadn't understood about the loaves because their hearts were hardened. As human beings, we have a, a tendency to kind of um, spook ourselves if we walk into a situation where it's it's dark. For example, some years ago, I took a crowd of youngsters into the church to do something. This this long before I came here to Forfar. And and it was winter, so it was dark early. And I was unlocking the door, trying to get in, and the kids were following me. And they were so spooked at every little breeze or every little creak or every little bit noise. Oh, 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 what's that? Until I put all of the lights on and they could see that there wasn't anything there at all. And as human beings, we have a tendency to do that if we're somewhere where it's very, very dark. We have a tendency to be a bit jumpy and, and our imaginations run riot. But this, this is in a totally different league. Following on from yesterday, he's had this amazing experience where the uh, the disciples have watched him recreate, they've watched him feed all these people. And if that wasn't mind-blowing enough, there they are at the end of the day, they're tired, at least they've been fed, and Jesus has said, okay, time to get out of here. And he gets them in a boat, he says, off you go, I'll meet you there, I'll meet you over at Bethsaida. I'm going up a mountain. Notice how Jesus always took time out with God. Lent is about taking time out with God. They say that it takes only, only about uh, 40 days to get into a, a, a habit, a good one or a bad one. It can take 90 days to break it. If we could get into that habit during Lent of taking time out to God, maybe it's something that we'll carry with us into the future. When he comes down from taking his time out with God, he can see that they're in a wee bit of trouble on, on, on the water there. The wind has got up. They must have been rowing for all they were worth. You know, they're trying to get to one place, and if the wind is against them, then there's no point in having the sails up because it's going to take them back the other way. And they must have been absolutely exhausted. They'd had a long, long day. And there they are having to exert all of this energy to get across to the other side. So Jesus decides he's going to head, out, head across as well. He's taking the shortcut. He's going across the water. And of course, in the, the midst of the storm and the, the spray of the water and the wind howling round about them, they see what you could only describe as a ghostly apparition. And yes, I can imagine them saying, are you seeing that? Is that just me, or are you seeing that? I think to say that they were astonished is kind of underselling it a little bit. <laughs> I, I, I know how I would have felt. And Jesus says to them exactly what I've pointed out the angels say. Every time somebody sees an angel, the conversation starts exactly the same way with the angel saying, don't be afraid. Jesus uses those same words. Hey, it's okay, don't be frightened. It's only me, fellas. It's only me. Like, as if that was normal. And he decides instead of walking on past, he's going to get in to the boat beside them. What would you see? I mean, would you even see anything? Totally stunned. It says at the end of that little passage that they hadn't really got it about the loaves and the fishes because their hearts were hardened. They have been watching a whole series of events since they've become disciples. 
water into wine at a wedding. They've watched Jesus healing the sick. They've listened to this amazing teaching that seems to make sense of some of their Old Testament history and the Old Testament writings. So they have been, they have been on this journey. They are starting to believe that he is who they think he is, God's chosen one, the Messiah. They had almost taken the feeding of the 5,000 for granted. They have been involved in serving the food, for goodness sakes, without stopping to think about what was really happening. But this, this is the icing on the cake. And I think it's one of these things, folks, and we've got to be there with them in this boat, in this thing, is, no, they don't understand that. And they're not going to be able to make sense of that. And when they tell other people and other people saying, get out of here, you know, they know that nobody is going to believe what they say, but they're saying it anyway. They're telling us anyway. Mark's gospel is shouting it out there so that we get it as well. And I need to say this. We are called to be part of God's family. We are called to be one of those followers. We're called to be in the boat. And there are going to be many, many times when we just don't understand. Maybe we're going to have to read through it a few more times to even try and make some sense of it. And maybe it goes against what we've always understood before. But that's what God does. That's what God does. He's the God of surprises, if you like. As he seems to walk into the middle of the storm and he'll do it in our lives in the storms of our lives, if we allow the Lord Jesus Christ to come and get in the boat with us, he'll have that calming influence and he'll have that, we'll have that reassurance that he's there. He's in the boat and we hold on to him. We might not understand it, but let's let him get in the boat and see us through. Today, Morgan is going to close in prayer for us. Thank you so much, Morgan. Friday the 5th of March, prayer for today, surprise us loving God with your power and present and help us not to be afraid when we do new things in our lives. Amen.